Hello dear students, in this lecture which is the part 4 of lecture series tissue culture techniques we will be discussing anther culture technique. So what is anther culture? Anther culture means plant regeneration from the anthers and what are anthers? They have haploid microspore cells. So anther culture is a technique of plant regeneration from the haploid microspore cells with the aim of a production of haploid plants and we can also make dihaploid plants once we make haploid plants. For example, say we have a diploid plant. So by anther culture, we can make um, uh, haploid plants and then these haploid plants can be uh, further uh, uh, made dihaploid by the application of colchicine treatment. So this is a technique uh, or a plant culturing technique in which immature pollen is made to divide and grow into tissue which can be either callus or embryonic tissue in either a liquid medium or a solid medium. Pollen containing anthers are removed from a flower. They are put in a culture medium. Some microspores survive and develop into tissue. So if embryonic tissue develops, it, it, it is put in a medium favorable for shoot and root development. Uh, if it's a callus tissue and if it's uh, put in a solution of hormones, then it will differentiate and develop root and shoot tissue. So basically anther culture is a technique of production of haploid plants whether through embryogenesis or through organogenesis into uh, by the exploitation the property of totipotency and plant cells. So this is a picture, a uh, pictorial description of the anther culture technique where you can see that this is a flower from the flower anthers are taken and from when these anthers are cultured on a suitable artificial medium then the anthers um, they develop into new haploid shoots so the microspores which are present in the anthers because they have only one set of chromosomes so they will develop into haploid shoots having only uh, one now, set of say chromosomes. this is a uh, say this is a tomato plant and from this tomato plant the flowers of different sizes they are taken and then from this say we have taken these three flowers and uh, in tissue culture lab in uh, laminar flow the anthers are isolated from the flowers so you can see that these yellow colored anthers are isolated and then uh, you can see that these are microspores which are present in these uh, uh, anthers. These anthers or microspores, they are cultured in artificial culture medium. So they develop into uh, shoots or callus depending upon the pathway they have taken for regeneration. So here you can see that this is the callus and these shoots have developed. And these shoots, uh, they are differentiated on a shooting media and then they are transferred to rooting media and suppose if these are embryos so they will directly form roots and shoots so these are your well developed plants and uh, this is a callus showing embryos this is a plant which has been transferred to soil after acclimatization so the plants which have developed here because they have developed from microspore microspores present in anther so they will be uh, your um, haploid plants. Now basically because this uh, anthers uh, and microscopes they are uh, microspores they are cultured in artificial conditions in tissue culture labs so the as we have already discussed in uh, last four lectures of tissue culture technique that the artificial culture medium is basically a basal medium which consists of macronutrients micronutrients vitamins, minerals, sucrose and agar agar and these provide nutrition to the developing explant and uh, they have different roles to play in the nutrition and 
so that the explant uh, develops into the new plant and uh, these basal medium depends which basal medium we are taking so there are eight kind of basal media white snobs murashigan skog murashigan tucker linsman and skog gamberg niche vessel sh medium and low and macron so it depends on the plant and the standardization technique which um, um, basal medium has to be taken and then it is supplemented with the growth regulators uh, with oxygen cytokine in gibberlin or abscisic acid depending upon the requirement of the uh, plant or the stage at which it develops so in this case our explant will be anthers and the shooting medium or the re rooting medium a uh, shooting medium will be basal media uh, which is supplemented with any cytokinin which can be ba tdz zeatin kinetin and then once the shoots develop when they are transferred to rooting media so rooting media uh, is basal media which is supplemented with auxin so this auxin can be any auxin indole acetic acid indole butyric acid 2,4-D, NAA. once the plants are formed they are transferred to incubators and then after acclimatization they are transferred to soil so this is the basic technique of any um, regeneration technique or regeneration of a plant from any of the um, explant which we are taking so what are the advantages of pollen culture or over anther culture for example uh, suppose we take uh, we isolate pollen from the anther and then we culture and suppose we do anther culture directly so when we isolate pollen from the anther and we culture it on artificial media it becomes pollen culture and when we directly um, culture the anther it becomes anther culture so what is the first advantage overcrowding of pollen grains in anther is eliminated and isolated pollen grains are equally exposed to nutrient medium so this is the first advantage that when you uh, culture the pollens then overcrowding is eliminated and the pollens they get uniform nutrition then unwanted growth of dye deployed cells of anther wall and other associated tissue is eliminated so suppose we directly culture the anther so anther wall has diaploid cells or somatic cells so they will or they can also um, differentiate into whole plant and then it will be difficult to differentiate the um, haploid plant or the diploid plant so suppose if we um, do only microspore culture so this is an added advantage now this third advantage is the stage of androgenesis can be observed starting from a single cell so suppose we uh, directly see under microscope which stage is this of microspore is this so this is very beneficial to differentiate a plant then various factors governing androgenesis can be better regulated depending upon the size of microspore and pollen is um, transformation uh, uh, pollen uh, uh, can be used for transformation and mutagenetic st st studies as pollen uh, can be uniformly exposed to chemicals and uh, physical mutagens then pollen can be directly transformed into an embryoid Embryo, uh, embryoid means embryo so it is very suitable for understanding biochemistry and physiology of androgenesis so if the pollen directly forms an embryo so it is very uh, it is a, this is a one uh, step uh, process to uh, uh, generate a new plant from the pollen and higher yield of haploid plants per anther could be expected in pollen culture than anther culture so these are the advantages of pollen culture over anther culture basically uh, pollen culture is to specifically form a plant a uh, haploid plant uh, and we just eliminate the uh, somatic cells of the anther wall now what are the applications of anther culture now first is utility of anther and pollen culture for basic research so because we will be getting haploid plants so haploid plants derived from anther and pollen culture are used for useful in cytogenetic studies by comparing these uh, uh, by comparing the uh, diploid counterparts with the haploid or homozygous diploid population 
recessive phenotypic characters can be identified very easily. So the first advantage is that uh, basically the recessive characters because they will be expressed in the haploid plants. So it is very easily observed uh, when they express in these plants. Use of anther and pollen culture in mutagenic uh, mutation studies. So normally under in vivo conditions the majority of the mutation is recessive and therefore it is not expressed in diploid cells in the presence of dominant gene. But when you get haploid callus cells or uh, haploid uh, plants, haploid, and so they can be studied to study the effect of various mutagens which can be both uh, radiations as well as the chemical mutagens. Then these haploid plants can be used for cryogenic study, cryopreservation of haploid pollen embryos, haploid meristem tips at very low temperature say minus 196 degrees Celsius in liquid nitrogen offers a, a new approach for the long term preservation of genetic stability and to establish a haploid germ plasm. Now the use ne next advantage is that the use of anther and pollen culture uh, is in plant breeding and crop improvement. So the basic and the most important advantage of in vitro production of haploids over conventional plant breeding method is saving of time. By anther and pollen culture, the homozygous diploid plants can be produced in a very short time, which usually takes a very long time through conventional breeding method. And the last advantage which we are discussing is that, that haploid plants or haploid culture is very useful in molecular biology experiments in genetic experience in genetic engineering experiments they can be used to transfer uh, transfer uh, alien genes of interest so uh, in this picture you can see anther culture which is also called androgenesis here you can see that uh, anther is the explant which we have taken and in this uh, this is the anther which we have taken as explant. Then after six days, B, this picture shows that it, this anther, this is after six days of culture and some embryos are emerging from the anthers. So uh, the embryos are both radical and plumule. So this picture shows that this is shoots and then the shoots plantlets with cotyledons. So you can see here uh, the plantlet with cotyledons and this is your root. And then the whole plant is formed, so which is transferred to the soil. So the, here in this picture, you can see that the embryogenesis is directly from the embryo, from the anther. So th this uh, this anther has taken the pathway of embryogenesis. So the embryos are directly formed and they are developing into new plant. This is another picture where you see that these are anthers. So you can make out that this is anther culture. When you see that the explant which is cultured on the um, cultured on the uh, um, artificial medium is anther, and so you just observe and you see that anther is the initial uh, explant and it is developing shoots. So this is your anther culture. So haploid plant production through anther culture. So you can see that this is anther put on a medium and bursting of um, anther shoot primordia from the callus then it is formation of root and further grown up plant, haploid plant. So I hope you have, this topic is clear to you students and you can please uh, you can refer um, go, books to understand the topic better. So please refer uh, plant tissue culture by um, uh, by Bojwani and Razdan and I have already suggested that you can also refer uh, other books like uh, P.K. Gupta Biotechnology to understand it better. Thank you students.